Greetings, health scholars, and welcome back to the For Health Scholars channel. If this is your first time tuning in, hello and welcome. My name is Dr. Arubasa, and I am the founder and host here at the For Health Scholars community. I'm super excited to have you join me in today's video. On this channel, I show current and aspiring healthcare professionals how to, one, quickly and successfully earn their degrees, and two, how to start, build, and enjoy profitable careers within the business side of the healthcare industry. So definitely subscribe to the channel and turn on your post notifications. I promise you don't want to miss out. Now, today's video is all about exploring entry-level healthcare jobs for public health professionals. So, so if you watched the last two videos that I posted, they explored entry-level jobs for healthcare administration professionals, and entry-level jobs for healthcare management professionals. And so today I wanted to explore some of the public health side as we do have members of the Health Scholars community who are interested or in a public health major or have a public health background. So I didn't want you to feel left out and I wanted to create a separate video dedicated to this profession. But before I jump into the conversation for today, Here's a few words from our sponsor. Do note that today's episode is sponsored by my course, which is titled From Healthcare Graduate to Hired. I'm so proud of this course, and I know that this is the course that you need if you are an active job seeker wanting to acquire a job in the healthcare space, particularly a non-clinical healthcare job. In this course, I walk you through my five-step strategy on how to go from active job seeker to hired, as well as I talk about things that people are not necessarily sure sharing with you on how to acquire a job in a digital era, because right now we are in a digital era. And many people, when you're looking for jobs, you're looking for these healthcare jobs online. So how do you navigate that process so that it is successful in helping you getting hired? Also in the course, you get a chance to work with me and the other students in the course. I review your resume, other job hunting documents. We work together on creating your personalized job hunting plan, because once again, the ultimate goal is to get hired. So definitely check out the course. You can sign up by accessing the link in the description box. And I look forward to seeing you on the other side. All right. So we are back. And as I stated, today's conversation, I'm going to explore a few entry-level public health jobs for those public health professionals who are looking for ways to enter the industry. So without further ado, let's jump into the conversation. Now, first things first, as a public health professional, your role to the overall healthcare system is very vital. And as a result of your profession, there are some core skills that you need to possess or some of the skills that I believe that will help you successfully thrive in the industry of public health is that one, you need to be a great communicator. And communication is key. No matter what role you're working in on the business side of the healthcare industry, being able to articulate the demands, being able to articulate patients and customers' wants, being able to articulate and provide solutions all requires you to have a level and a mastery of effective communication. And there's multiple ways to communicate. There's bodily communication, verbal communication, written communication, and as you can imagine, the list goes on and on. So you really need to master the skill of communication. Another skill that you should possess is cultural competency. Now, the field of public health is slightly different than what you see in healthcare administration and management. As public health professionals and the industry of public health, your main patient or customer are members of communities. So as a public health professional, you know that you don't look at members in society from an individual or one-on-one -on -one basis. Actually, you do public health surveillance and other tasks in the public health sector looking at communities of people. So for example, if you are interested in exploring the COVID-19 outbreak, Instead of just looking at one person who has COVID-19 as a public health professional, you're going to try to look at communities of people who may be affected or affected by COVID-19. So in public health, the patient or clientele population is not seen as an individual. It is looked at from a cumulative perspective of communities of people, samples of people. So, so as a result of that, you need to be culturally sensitive and competent so that you are able to communicate effectively to the targeted population population or members of various societies. Then you need to have great problem solving skills, 
other skills is ethics and professionalism. This is key as public health professionals. You should be able to adhere to professional standards and be able to uphold those standards in your work. Of course, having great mastery and knowledge of health policies, that is key. And then epidemiology knowledge. So if you're not sure what epidemiology is, it is the science part of public health, right? So it is the study of public health and disease prevalence and epidemiology as a public health professional is definitely rooted in your curriculums, whether you are studying public health from the bachelor's level all the way to the doctoral level. Understanding epidemiology and epidemiologic principles is key. You should be able to understand how disease is distributed and spread from community members to community members. So having those core skills under your belt as a public health professional will really take you far. But I also want to explore some of the pros and cons of being a public health professional. Now, some of the pros is that, of course, you're going to make a positive impact in communities because, once again, in public health, your patients is actually communities of people. Also, you have the opportunities for collaboration for healthcare systems, down to not-for-profit organizations, down to community councils. So that's something to keep in mind. There's a variety of job roles out there, and public health jobs are in demand. So I hope that gives you hope as an aspiring or current public health professional looking to enter the field of public health. Now, with every pro, of course, there are cons. And some of the cons as a public health professional is that you, you may experience increased stress, especially with the demand of the workload, making sure that you are monitoring many people at a time. Whereas what we see in traditional healthcare systems, we deal with patients on a one-to-one -one basis. But in public health, that is not the case. Also, you may have an intense workload, complex challenges, and just think about some of the pandemics that we've had or epidemics or endemics that we have seen globally and how to manage that and whether you are a public health professional who's wanted to be at the front line, if you want to be on the policy side, administration side, or you want to be back in the laboratory trying to understand how disease spreads and disease prevalence. So just keep that in mind. You may be exposed to a few liabilities as well well as have access to limited resources at any given time. So before you make the decision of whether this is the career path for you, or if you are already a public health professional, these are some of the things that you need to take in consideration as you find employment. And so with that, let's talk about some entry-level roles that you can potentially apply to and get hired for as a public health professional who may be starting out or transitioning into the field of public health. So the first entry-level job is a public health educator. And as a public health educator, you are responsible for developing and implementing educational programs that promote healthier behaviors and prevent disease transmission. That is key. And so as a the public health educator, it's about instilling knowledge and teaching and addressing areas where there's a need for awareness. And so some of the educational requirements that you need as a public health educator includes having at least a bachelor's degree or higher. Now, the starting salary for a public health educator starts roughly about $40,000 per year, and it can go up to $60,000 and higher. But as I stated in my last two videos, when it comes down to salary, there are multiple factors that come into play. Some of the factors, if you haven't watched those videos, is that one, what is the budget of the organization? What state do you live in? What are your current skills and competencies? And how well do you negotiate current job offers? So all of that comes into play when you're determining the appropriate salary for you. And if you always want to know where to start or what is the ideal salary for a given position, websites like salary.com or payscale.com can give you in-depth knowledge so that you know how to better advocate and negotiate your pay rate. And now, what is the potential for promotion as a public health educator? So the next position that you can advance to or be promoted to, you can become a public health director or you can become a public health manager. Just to think of the few, you can be a public health analyst. And there's so many different roles that you can work at the entry level as a public health professional. So I hope this gets you excited, but please keep this in mind as you are looking for jobs in your job search. The next role, community health worker. And this is another entry level position. As a community health worker, you are on the front line with public health professional, and you serve as a liaison between community members and healthcare providers. And so in order to sufficiently operate as a community health worker, you need to have at least a high school 
or GED or higher um, in education, the starting salary for a community health worker ranges anywhere from $30,000 to $40,000 plus per year. And if you were to be promoted from community health worker, the next position that you can acquire as you advance in your career is that you can become a community health educator or you can become a community health manager. And so just kind of giving you some ideas of the different job titles that you need to be entering in the job search in order to find the right opportunities that are vacant and that you can apply to with the hopes that you get hired because getting hired is the end goal. Now, the next role is you can become a health program coordinator. And as a health program coordinator, you're able to manage and coordinate public health initiatives and programs. And some examples of that can be like vaccination campaigns or reproductive health campaigns. And you're also responsible for some of the administrative work that comes with implementing an initiative or a program. So as it relates to education, at minimum, you should have a bachelor's degree or higher to work in the role as a health program coordinator. And the starting salary is anywhere from $40,000 to $60,000 plus. But once again, as I stated, there are several factors that come into play when it comes to determining the ideal salary. Now, is there room for promotion as a health program coordinator? Absolutely. And so the next job that you may work or advance to is a public health educator. The next job, environmental health specialist. And this is not a popular job, but it's definitely something that is essential to the overall health ecosystem. As an environmental health specialist, you are responsible for either identifying or assessing environmental health hazards. So looking at things like soil, water, air pollution, food safety, and some places and some organizations that you may work in as an environmental health specialist could be the FDA, it could be the CDC, right? So just giving you some organizations that may potentially hire you as an environmental health specialist and the educational requirement to operate in this role is to have at least a bachelor's degree or higher. The starting salary is about $43,000 in some states that I've seen, and it could go as high up to $73,000 plus. Okay. So just look at the state, look at the organization, what are their budgets, and what are you willing to work for? And then if you had to be promoted from this role, the next promotional job title could be environmental health manager. So those are just a few job titles that I wanted to share with you as a professional who is interested in the field of public health and looking for a way to enter the field. Those are some of the positions that you can work. Let me know in the comment section if this information has been helpful to you. As I find more jobs, I'll definitely do a part two or three to this video series, but this is a great starting ground. And once again, as I conclude today's video, I want to thank you for tuning in to today's video and make sure to like, subscribe, and share. Bye for now.